tools wise, to be honest, it's quite a simple rifle. So I've just got some flat bladed screwdrivers, small, medium, and large, some long nose pliers. What I've done is I've actually wrapped some masking tape or decorators tape, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it, it helps grip the pins and it also stops scratching any parts sort of Allen keys. They're mainly just to locate when you put the pins back in. I didn't have any punches. So I've just taken just a small nail and I've rounded and smoothed the end because they tend to be hardened anyway. So it'll stand up to it. A hammer, a little bit heavy duty, but as long as you care, it will do the job. See, once you've stripped it down, you want to clean it. I've just got some, just some gun oil. And I like to use a white rag. This is obviously used, but it generally lets you know when you've got the dirt off. So I prefer to use a white one. You can wash them. Okay, so let's start with the easiest thing. Um, so that is the, the bolt handle. Just lift it up, press the trigger, and it will slide straight out. I'll come back to that a little bit later. So just to also, I like to use a nice gun mat. It, it just it stops you damaging any other parts, despite the fact some wood and it shouldn't really do it, but it's good practice. Um, so it'd be nice just to get the stock out of the way. So I'll start with the furniture first, really. Just the sling loops. Just turn them anti-clockwise. The front one is threaded design. And then the rear one, because it goes into the wood of the stock, more of a coarse screw type. Right, let's let's remove the stock. So the gun is actually just held on with this screw. This screw in the middle of the trigger guard plate. So just lift those out. Generally I'll oil those before I put them in just to make sure. And then that will slide out. Trigger guard is in two pieces you'll see in a moment. These are screw threads because they, they do go into the actual wood of the stock so they might be quite stiff as you heard you better just to put downwards pressure on the screwdriver while you're turning it because obviously you don't want to you don't want to chew the surfaces of the screw these are actually exactly the same length so it doesn't really really matter if you mix them up and then your trigger guard will come straight off and then a plate. If you notice the raised section that actually faces away from the stock when you when you're refitting it. Okay, so that that is the stock off and away. <clears throat> now the front sight has a little a little pin at the front that you just depress. Now these, if they've not been off in, in a while, are, are very, very hard to get off. So, and also you don't want to damage it. So using something like wood or a piece of plastic. I mean, I've got, I've just got a little wire brush here, but I mean, you could even, even push that against the back of it. Obviously holding it easier with another set of hands. Push the pin down at the front and you can hit it off with the hammer so you don't damage the uh, damage the steel. Right, the rear sight, this is pretty simple. It's stiff, but if you push it down, it just comes straight off. I'll come back, I might as well do this now. So, oh, that was easy, that's my next part. The, spring actually slides in notice how the raised bit is towards the front of the site the range adjust the tab whatever you want to call it simply just depress the button and it comes out and 
then that will slide down and then out a little gap in the middle. Just be careful because there is there's a small spring in there that obviously you don't really want to lose. So that's a rear sight leaf. Uh, I don't really need to remove this, but it, if you need to, you've got a little screw on either side. I mean, they are very small, but if you back them off enough, that just simply lifts out of place. Okay, working back to remove the magazine magazine housing here. But actually, let's take the let's take the pin out first. So my trusty nail. Most of these generally just push out anyway, so we don't need the hammer. What I will say is you can leave the nail in there and you can take the pin out. Um, and then, because these are spring loaded, it's not much of a surprise. You can then lift the nail out. Oh. This is quite a bit, of a bit of a nightmare to get in, but there is a spring in the back of it, so, so don't lose it. The screws. Once you can just oil them when you put them back in. Stops it seizing also, avoids any rust. Yeah, so you've got a shorter one at the front, a longer one at the back. Right, so we've got the trigger mechanism. Now there are a couple of springs in this and there is a ball bearing in the front there, so just be very careful when you remove it um, because obviously you don't want any parts to go flying, i.e. the ball bearing. Yeah, these, these come off quite easily as well. The trigger itself tends to rock. Now, you just get your pliers. Allow the trigger off. It won't come out until we have removed the sear. As I said, you don't really need you don't really need much force to remove any of these pins. On. And there's the ball bearing. <laughs> so that has to slide in to the trigger mechanism when you refit it. So just remember that a little spring, little spring at the front, where the ball bearing sits. The spring on the back here, <clears throat> there's actually a couple of pieces to it. So there's obviously the spring itself. And there is a little flat plate. Now, the flat side of this actually faces up this way, towards the side that says Made in Czechoslovakia. And there is a tiny little washer which I don't know if you can see that, but it does have the cutout for the flat pin, so just be mindful of that when you put it back on, it can only really go one way. And it's <clears throat> the top is actually the concaved side. I'm guessing that's just to help locate the spring. If you need to go this far, there is there is another pin sort of on the back. So you've got two pins that came out. The longer one is for the trigger. And the shorter one is for the sear. Okay, so further disassembly, because obviously you might want to, and it's advised to get inside the bolt. What I've got here is just a, it's just a Torx bit. The reason why I like to use these is the end is actually rounded, so it avoids you um, putting any scratches. Sorry. Bolt needs to be in the down position. Just take the tension off. The safety catch pulls out the top. And then you can just use the bolt. And it'll slide out. There's a spring inside. 
Michael Farrington. And last part to remove on this are the extractors. Now, there are two extractors. They are different sizes. So the large one actually faces the sort of the, the right hand side of the rifle. If you have a look in the back uh, on the, the back of the breech face, you, you will be able to see. Um, but yeah, so the larger one goes on the right hand side and the smaller one goes on the left. I've got a nice simple little spring just to get them off. Now this can be a bit fiddly. Through like a through your hand. And you can just pull it out, push it round, and then you get a retainer clip off. Now these for some reason don't always like to wiggle out, so you just sort of push them outwards and you get your trusty long nose pliers, he says. So I like to put these on the correct side. 